I don't hold to. I enjoy his apologetical approach insofar as it is a, he takes to the presuppositionalist um, uh, form of apologetics. But in terms of theology, um, as he's an evangelical, not so much. Uh, no, I'm not part of the Darth crew. No. Okay. Yeah, just curious. Um, yeah. So here, here's a question. But I think the overall, his overall argument against your agnosticism is that it's the idea that you're um, devoid of any sort of um, um, exposition of your of your presuppositions as though you're devoid of, of the, the ultimately the network of basic assumptions that are the that you use as a standard of interpreting facts about the physical world. That is that every worldview has an epistemology and crafted out of that epistemology is a metaphysical conclusion. Um, now, that is that every worldview has a starting point that's self-attesting. So the agnostic, when they, when they proclaim this position of neutrality, um, they don't understand that they can't be agnostic when it comes to an origin point or point of initial singularity of um, all, all uh, derivational states. Um, and then once again, you could be agnostic to things within the, or contingencies or within the physical world. Like if there is a jar of marbles, it contains a thousand marbles. You don't, you don't know that for sure without the requisite foreknowledge of that uh, jar containing a thousand marbles. Um, but when dealing with what caused that jar of marbles, which would be uncontingent, you don't have the option. It's either you explicitly affirm or implicitly deny or explicitly deny in your case implicitly um, that which would be your um, ultimate commitment. I think that's the basic or overall idea um, of his position, most of the presuppos presuppositionalist position on agnosticism. Well, I didn't hear I a clear so. argument there, but I didn't hear like premises and conclusions. I wasn't giving you an argument. Okay. I was saying that's the general idea. Okay. No, that's fine. Um, well, one claim that Darth made was that you either say that the proposition God exists or sorry, you uh, accept or reject it or affirm or deny. He said something like that. Um, I assume you agree with him about that? Uh, yeah. Okay. And by affirm or deny, we mean you either say it's true or you say it's false? Correct, yeah. Okay. And why can't I say I don't know if it's true or false? Uh, because you're dealing with um, an ultimate that would be the starting point, the beginning point for all derivational facts and statements. Sorry, I, now I'm looking for an argument though. What's the argument that I can't just say? I'm uncertain, right? Because you understand when it comes to another proposition, like it's raining outside. I don't have to say that's true or false. I can just say, I don't know, right? Do you, you agree with that presumably, right? Yeah, um, the, so, so the so argument we'll here just, is just that like, agnosticism... One, one second, sorry, just let yeah. me finish. So mm -hmm. I understand that you want to take this... So sometimes, like when I talked to that Chad guy yesterday, he was trying to take the position that you can't be agnostic about anything, right? Which is obviously hilarious, that's ridiculous. Um, yeah, people I would, who are yeah, a bit closer to Darth, they want to try to say you can be agnostic about some things, but not others, right? And that I don't understand. I don't understand why the, I can't no, say... I, I, I did, I did. I didn't say that. You're lying. Uh, well, I tried to ask you about <laughs> about sitting in my chair, and it was amazingly hard to get an answer of you. But yeah, in fact, if, you if, you just there. to be clear, if, if, if that's not your position, that's totally fine. If that's not your position, I accept that. Um, um, now, you can't compare your, what chair you're sitting in to, to like, a god. You can't uh, okay. well, refresh. That, that's what we here. need the argument for. Okay, so, like, you can't be agnostic yeah. uh, and not be an atheist, because if you're agnostic, you're still denying God. Okay, if you're denying God, you're not I'm happy, what is I'm happy to let you continue. Spirit? I'm happy to let you continue, what is, but when you say atheist, presume, I just want to make sure we're using agnostic. the words in the same way. I just want to make sure we're using the words in the same way. Agnostic, is someone, agnostic. let's just be clear that we're using the words the same way. If you say that you're agnostic, you're saying, I don't believe P is true or false. If you say you're an atheist, you're actually saying, I believe the proposition God exists is false. We're using the words in the same way, right, Chad? Oh, uh, it looks like he left. 
Um, I mean, you seem better. Uh, I'll take up this position. Yeah. So, um, Sorry, but, but before you yeah, continue, but, and and again, like I have no interest in railroading you. I'll let you talk ninety percent of the time if you want. But we just need to make sure we're using the words the same way. You're fine with those uses of atheist <laughs> and agnostic. Atheist says it's false that God exists. Agnostic yeah. says I'm not sure if it's true or false. Right. Yeah, that's what they claim to say. Okay, yeah. You, no, no, it's fine. I understand your whole argument is that one of those things doesn't make Good. sense. I just, I just want to make Good. sure we agree okay. with what they say. And now the only other thing I want to say before passing it to you is, so I understand that you want to say that there's a bunch of propositions, and for most of those propositions, you can say, I'm an agnostic about it, but for this one proposition, God exists, you can't say that. So I want to understand why that's the case. That's what we need the argument for. Yeah, because God would be um, that which is um, unconditionally non-dependent, irreducible, and metaphysically primary for all facts that you appeal to. So in, in you right there, when you're engaging in reasoning, um, you're making a plurality of knowledge claims, but you make the ostensible claim that you, that you don't know um, where you're coming from. That would be the initial point of singularity, which are the groundwork. And um, uh, uh, yeah, that's, they're the grounding for making these claims. So when you say, I don't know, God exists, um, that would just simply be an imp. You cut out. That would be. Oh, yeah, when you're saying um, every system or school of thought has a starting point that's self attesting. So um, any claim, uh, any claim that you make um, that you don't know God exists, that's just that's simply a disposition rather than a logically coherent statement. That is, is that you're not you're unaware of the logical consequences of making a statement when you're making a or at least claim to not be making, but ultimately making a positive indirectly of god's non-existence that that would be that it would in, it would necessitate and entail god's non-existence but that's only for the christian god though when you ask him about other faiths just, yeah we'll get sorry, to that one, we'll one, get to that later one on one second brilliant so i understand that you're trying to deliver an argument right now that shows that it's impossible to be agnostic about the proposition that god exists right well, it's a disposition. That's the point. I'm saying the disposition could, could apply to contingencies within the physical world, sorry, I, but I, that I, not I, that which is immaterial that. and ultimate. You, sorry, I just I just want to be clear though. You are you're trying to give an argument that shows why it's impossible to be agnostic about God, right? Isn't that what you're doing? Well, I'm saying it's not it's not impossible. Well, yes, yeah, it would well, be if you grant that, that if you, it would right, be logically right. impossible to be agnostic about a creator god that's okay. correct what, okay. what makes now, this sense out of uh, now, sorry, kind of this so, sorry, Ning Klau, you're always you're always interrupting no matter yeah, what I, i'm having a nice conversation but, uh, let with, ask yourself with, talking with nicholas sorry uh, just one second so yeah right uh, of course like it, presumably that's what you're saying that it's logically impossible to be agnostic so if you say it's logically impossible you have to actually show that there's a contradiction entailed in being agnostic right you would agree yeah. with that so I don't see the contradiction. Can you tell me what propositions make up the contradiction? Yeah, the propositions, if I were to make the proposition that um, every individual has, an, um, has a network of underlying basic assumptions that serves as a formula of, of making interpretations about the physical world, whether that be um, introspection um, loss of making use of the loss of logic and in, in, uh, incorporating that with your lines of reasoning, um, uh, sense perception, um, causal principle, um, literally anything at all. Um, and that to appeal to a position of supposed neutrality would be futile because you're unaware of the logical um, consequences. Okay, so... At There's logical point, consequences for anything you do. When we're talking about epistemology, how you know that you know things, which w would be argu arguably the substructure to a worldview and establishing a worldview. Everyone has a worldview. Um, it's just some people like you who claim to be on the fence who are unaware of the logical consequences of it. Okay, so 
I think that it's important that we take a moment to talk about what one is actually saying when they say something is logically impossible, right? When they're saying that there's a contradiction. Now, do you understand formally what a contradiction is? Yeah. Okay. But I'm saying your position, yeah, I'm saying either proposition, the law of, yeah. For instance, the law of not contradiction stating that a proposition as negation can't coexist. Um, that would be to say that in you're taking this this illusory, or rather, I should sorry, have. Sorry, um, Nick, I, I don't. I don't mean to cut you off. It's just okay. You can interrupt me too if I'm missing the point, but I I think you're missing what I'm trying to get at right here. Right? Maybe what you're saying is true, but I don't think it's addressing what I'm talking about. We're having this conversation and we're invoking words like contradiction, and. I'm unclear if you understand precisely what a contradiction is, because when I asked you to show the contradiction, you kind of gave like, it was sort of like a paragraph, which I'm not saying that to be mean or anything, but if I ask you what the truth table for a contradiction looks like, would you be able to answer that or are you uncertain? No, I could, I could give you a basic, I'm sorry if I um kind That's of okay. bloviated. Um, no, okay. Yeah, a contradiction would be if a, um, if I were to say that, um, uh, if I were to state a proposition and there, if, if, if like two, if a proposition negation, if a proposition negation were both the same, then that would be a contradiction. So, so two things that are uh, co conflict with each other. You're, you're on the right path. Two things that conflict with each other is, is not quite there. Do you understand what the truth table for a contradiction would look like? A truth table? Yeah, so when we do, like, basic logic, usually, like, the first kind of logic people will learn is propositional logic. And to show okay. yeah, arguments I know you're have the properties, or, so do you, I guess we should talk about the basic stuff first. Like, you understand what validity and soundness are in logic, right? Right, okay. Now, yes. I just, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Can you just define those things for me? Yeah, validity um, would be that which comports to... Um, reality or would be truthful um, and when you're dealing with something that is sound um, logically um, it means that it's consistent and coherent okay so what you've just said now I don't I don't want to offend you but like you're like not even close to what validity and soundness are if we go open like a basic philosophy resource so I don't I don't want to have to derail the conversation into a like let's cover sort of basic logic stuff but when we're invoking words like contradiction and we don't have like the most basic understanding of um logic and again i'm, I'm really like i hope you aren't perceiving this as me like shaming you because i'm not like plenty of people don't know logic but it's just it's, it's relevant to this conversation well it's, yeah well what's hard. the what's your definition of logic well, i mean just, excuse me okay, what's your definition but... <laughs> of contradiction it, well yeah so a contradiction when, well, this is why I'm trying to explain things like truth truth tables and whatnot first, but a contradiction is going to be a statement that evaluates to false in every possible world. So if we... Yeah, that's like, fair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if we... Uh, so let's just cover what validity and soundness are. So an argument is valid if and only if it's impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false. So you said that validity had to do with truthfulness. It doesn't. Val truth is not a condition for validity. Validity has nothing to do with truth. Um, validity is just about the structure of the argument. So I can give you an argument like this that's just bullshit, right? Like, if Nicholas is a cat, Nicholas is purple. Nicholas is a cat. Therefore, Nicholas is purple. That argument is valid, but you can obviously tell there's false statements in there, right? Yeah, um, I'm just cat. trying to see how this ties... Yeah, I'm just trying to see how this ties in with your um, agnosticism. Yeah, we're, we're going to come back to it. We're just, we're only derailing into logic long enough to get like a clear understanding of contradiction. And then we're going to go back uh, and end of validity and soundness. So validity is just the property of an argument that it is impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion false. Now, impossible there, obviously, it refers to logical impossibility. But there's actually ways to show that in, in a way that looks mathematical. It, it, it is mathematical. Um, soundness is the combination of validity, which is like the structure of the argument is right, and true premises. So the truth part is relevant to soundness, not validity. And when we're talking about a contradiction, we're talking about a statement that if we represent it formally, it's going to evaluate to false in every possible world. So like the standard contradiction is 
P and not P, right? So for example, uh, God I, exists. I, I know, I know the, I know the laws. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I know. I, was, I wasn't talking. I know about the, the basic laws. components. Was, yeah, I know the basic components of logic, um, and their philosophical definition. Okay. Um, okay. but so I'm just trying back, to see how this coheres with now. your position yep, of agnosticism. Yep. Now I'm, I'm going so back. This seems like circumvention. Okay. Well, um, uh, with your so, agnosticism, sorry, but, first off, we're not just, dealing with that so which is ultimate, back, absolute, invariant, and unchanging, and it's the starting and origin point for all derivational and contingent states. So I'm saying, how uh, Nick, is so it? How can you be agnostic with an ultimate authority, which would author all that you say and do? So, sorry, Nick, I was almost done that whole thing. I remember exactly where we were in the conversation, right? We say that there's some propositions that you can be agnostic about. We say there's some that you can't. And then we say that God is one where you can't, right? And the idea is that there's a logical contradiction there. Okay, I'm not dealing going into logic for no reason. We're coming right back to the topic. It's just important to clear up that groundwork. So now that we understand what exactly we mean by a contradiction, a statement that if represented formally, it's going to evaluate to false in every possible world, what I need you to do, if you want to say it's logically impossible to be agnostic, is show with, you know, propositions entailed somehow by agnosticism, uh, some kind of statement that's going to evaluate to false in every possible world. So now I'm going to ask the question I asked a long time ago, which is what propositions actually form the contradiction? Yeah, well, I'd say that um, everybody makes truth in, in appeals to knowledge um in various propositional and um various propositional formats um but you're and you're appealing to something that's ultimate but you um don't acquiesce to it being the triune god of the bible see this is why i started talking about logic because i didn't hear you actually spell out a contradiction there like you're kind of just telling me your position like, I want to know what the contradiction is. You can give me a... I never said it was... Yeah, I never... I said it's... I'm saying it's logically incoherent. Look, sorry, lo if you said it was logically impossible. You said yeah. that it's impossible to be... And again, you can back off of I'm this. Saying, yes, I don't logically think, impossible. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so me, when something's logically impossible, it's logically impossible to take an intermediary position that would... Um, an intermediary position on that which is ontologically primary. Why do you think it is logically possible to take a middle ground on that which exists necessarily and is our ultimate most foundational commitment when reasoning? To be clear, you're asking Very me, simple. Yeah, That's all I want. Yeah, I'm just clarifying the question. You're asking me Because this is very yes, because this is this is like okay. about God. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I would say because no one has shown that a contradiction is entailed by being agnostic. That's just all it means to be logically possible. Yeah, because it's a yes, because it's ultimately a disposition. It's not something that is logically coherent. Do you, I, again, I don't mean to be rude, but do you think that you've actually spelled out what the contradiction is that's entailed by agnosticism? Uh, yeah, so the problem here is, is that... I'm really not. Yeah, why it's logically incoherent is that everybody has a network, a groundwork of basic presuppositions and assumptions that supply us with the ability to uh, anatomize and uh, apprehend the uh, physical universe and reality. Okay, Not everything within it, but just the preconditions for understanding. Um, now, the, the problem with agnosticism is there is no, it, it, it doesn't, the problem with agnosticism is, is that there's taking up a intermediary position that is, that violates the law of excluded middle. That is a proposition um, can either be true or false there is no middle ground. So it's either true, God ex exists, or it is false, God exists. Um, but, but Nick, so, sorry, Nick, well, let's just, I want to talk to Nick. So we don't disagree that the proposition is true or false. Let's like set aside any kind of like fuzzy logic or, or multi-variable logic. Let's just say we're talking about a bivalent logic. Yeah, so under that assumption, we'll agree that it's true or false, right? But here's the important part, okay? There's a distinction 
between whether the proposition is true or false, we can agree the proposition has to be true or false, and whether you have a belief about it being true or false, right? I can say the proposition has to be true or false, that doesn't mean that I have to believe one or the other. I might not be sure which it is. My belief about the proposition is different than the actual truth value of the proposition. So just to go back to what I was trying to say, we're, what we're getting hung up on here is you're trying to say it's logically impossible to be an agnostic, but you're not actually spelling out a logical contradiction that's entailed by being agnostic. That's what I need. Yeah, this to is do. just this is yeah, this is just philosophy speak gobbledygook that you're attempting to dupe me on, okay? Because I'm not talking about dispositional, yeah. I'm not talking about dispositional circumstances when you say, Oh, I don't know, and you're in you in no listen, nobody is um uh Nobody could be apathetic or indifferent to that which exists ultimately. Do you know sorry, the difference sorry, between with Nick, something? I, I do you know the difference? You, you reasserted the claim. Do you know? That's do you know the, the difference? Do you Nick, know the difference between you to prove. something that is ultimate? Do you know the difference between so, something so, that is ultimate and something that's not sorry, ultimate? Sorry, Nick. You just made. Uh, you just begged the question. Okay. What you just did was you said it's impossible to be agnostic about God. I know that's the claim you're making. That's what I'm asking you to show. That's what you need an argument for. You need to actually. Do you know the show... difference between something that is ultimate and something that's not ultimate? I, okay, you know I'll answer these questions if you want, but you understand that you're just. Yeah, I really yourself... appreciate it. Can you, you understand answer the question? That you're just letting yourself off the hook for actually showing that it's logically impossible, right? Yeah, I'm showing. I'm showing it's logically impossible um, by applying the what Socratic the method by asking you a series of questions and seeing if you have a genuine understanding of what these. Uh, but, questions entail okay. that would be please answer the question it's very um, do you know the difference, though, Nick, difference because, between because that you're ultimate the one, sorry, do you know the difference sorry Nick, excuse Nick, me i should i should have said me, all those. I'm, actually, conversation. I'm actually kind of, i'm not working the conversation no Nick, yeah this I, is what you, you do you are you're very specialized Nick, in that aren't I'm you I'm now happy to explain do you know the difference between that exists Ultimately, and that which is not it's impossible. If you claim it's impossible, you have to be able to show a contradiction. That's what I want. Just show the contradiction. Yeah, I'm saying the logical imp there's logical implications for your position of agnosticism. Okay. The Just logical tell implications. Me what the contradiction is. Yeah, the logical implications entail the unintelligible and implausible um, uh, regularities. Nick, of the physical world what you seem to not understand what a contradiction is you're just giving me propositions right i'm asking I'm, i you asked i asked you a question yeah i asked not, you a question that i've yet to answer you're trying to ask a question to escape my line of reasoning nick you made a claim you said that something is impossible right that i take that to mean that there's a logical contradiction now can you show the logical contradiction yeah, I'm saying agnosticism entails something that's logically incoherent. I know that you think it's logically incoherent. I'm asking you what the logically incoherent, right, the contradictory statement is. What is the contradiction that's entailed? I'm not asking you to... Yeah, that you could be claim. neutral. That you could... The logical... The logical... The logical error that you've made is that you can be neutral when dealing with... When dealing with God. And that it, it could be logically sound and coherent oh, if you were to say that you're neutral or ambivalent when dealing with something that is ontologic, that is an ontological necessity, I, and is, that is primary. Now, if it's you know, if it's primary, I'm saying if it's primary oh, and is the starting answering. point. Okay, you I'll to talk to Ninclau. I want to talk to Ninclau. I, I give up. Statements of understanding. Excuse me. It's logically incoherent oh, because it entails this. atheism. <laughs> want to know the want to know the reason because yeah, it entails atheism. Nick, Since agnosticism Nick, entails atheism indirectly, oh excuse me, God. I'm explaining it I'm, to you. I'm, I'm is it because I'm now only explaining is. it to you? You don't want to understand and listen. I just want you to tell me what the contradiction is. You're trying to ramble at me. I've asked you the same question for like 20 minutes. Just tell me what the contradiction is. Yeah, um, that your agnostic no, no, no. your agnosticism <laughs> entails atheism. I'm, no, that's not a, saying, look, here, you want to hear what a contradiction is? Okay, saying agnosticism entails atheism, that's not a contradiction, okay? It's, uh, there's a falseness there, but that's, that's a side point. Okay, what is a contradiction would be saying agnosticism entails atheism, and it's not the case that agnosticism entails atheism. That's a contradiction, okay? 
Just I don't know problem. why you invoked. I don't know why you invoked contradiction. Can I ask a clarifying question? Yes, you're happy. Definitely, go ahead and info. Okay, so Nicholas, um, you think that uh, you can't, uh, you know, be agnostic about God. Which I think is kind of funny because agnosticism, the word actually deals specifically with a God claim. Um, but my question to you is this Do you agree that there is a distinction to be made between what is and what you know is? Wait, sorry, sorry. This is, this is, I, I'm sorry, Ninclaud, but that really is a derail, right? If he is claiming that something is impossible, the only thing that we should be saying to that is just show us the contradiction. I'm saying you're not neutral. Okay. Okay. Uh, I would like to listen, again, listen, sorry, listen again, loud and clear. You're not listen neutral loud and is clear. not a contradiction. A your contradiction agnosticism you're not neutral and necessitates atheism. Your agnosticism is an that, implicit rejection of the Christian worldview. It's not true, but it's also not but a contradiction. Right? I said logically impossible, and I then you started to mean that a contradiction. contradiction. Well, I don't care what you take things to mean. Okay, truthfully, I, okay, I, think well, I, I, don't, I don't understand. Look, Nick, I'm sorry, but it was very obvious that you don't know, like, basic things about how formal logic actually works, okay? You didn't know what a truth table is. I'm not really willing to humor your proprietary definition of logical impossibility, right? Like, what do you... I, I will humor it, fine. What do you even think that I'm just means curious as not, to, there's a contradiction? I'm just, yeah, I'm just curious as to why you think that you're ostensible neutrality doesn't eventually lead to atheism. Okay. Well, or ultimately really is just an implicit acceptance of an atheistic Just, just um, to be clear, outlook. are you still claiming it's impossible to be agnostic? Yeah, it, okay. it leads and to... When, and if you, if you atheism. don't mean... If you don't mean why do you not think it necessitates atheism? Why do you not think it necessitates atheism? Sorry. Um, what I was going to say is, I, okay, so you say it's impossible. Now, you, you can't, you don't seem to be able to show a contradiction, but if you don't mean by impossible that there's a contradiction, what the fuck do you mean when you say it's impossible? Yeah, it's an impossible to be, it's impossible to claim that you can be neutral. Okay, it's I'm logically not, impossible I, I, to be no, neutral look, with God. I'm asking, I'm not... I'm asking you what it means. It's logically to impossible to be neutral okay. with God. And what you agree with that? What? No. What does logical impossibility mean? That's what I'm asking you. No, I take it to mean that there's a contradiction. It means you cannot you take. No, no. It's logically impossible to take an intermediary position. Nick, stop oh invoking the word logically impossible without explaining what it means. I just told what you. What does it mean to say something is logically impossible? And you violated the law of excluded middle. Violated the law of excluded middle. So I've said yes. some. No, no, Therefore, no. your refusal, your refusal to explicitly wait, wait, and sorry, overtly sorry, accept sorry, the sorry, Christian sorry, worldview is sorry, hello, 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 hello. I want clarity on that. Okay, so is that wrong? By logically impossible. You mean that the law of the excluded middle has been violated? So you think that there's some proposition? that I'm saying is not true or false, right? That's the claim. If someone's an agnostic, they're saying that some proposition is not true and not false. I'm saying that you you have proclaimed a position of agnosticism with God. Okay. And I'm you, saying that Nick, is incoherent. You said that it's impossible. By impossible, I thought you meant what people normally mean, which is that there's a contradiction. You weren't happy with that, right? In fact, you tried to defend that for a while, and when it fell apart, you changed it, right? But now you're saying it's that there's a violation of the law of the excluded middle, and whether those things... Uh, are you good. kept... What, what really happened was, is okay, you kept... Stop, 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 stop. Let me continue. Okay, now, you said that there's a violation of the law of the excluded middle. Now, I take, I take excluded middle to mean that a proposition is either true or false. There's not a middle state, right? Is that what you take it to mean? Right. Okay. So yeah, that's think, the law of excluded middle. Right. Okay, so you're saying that if someone is an agnostic, they're claiming that some proposition is not true and not false, right? Um, I'm not saying that they're claiming that. I'm cl I'm simply stating that that's what their agnosticism. Um, I'm saying their agnosticism uh, entails, entails that there is true. supposedly an okay, intermediary that, position. Yep. yep I, okay. Yeah, so and I, that's I, why. Just to, be, just to be clear, I understand, Nick. That you're not actually saying that they're making that claim that there is some proposition that's not true and not false you're saying that it's entailed by their agnosticism 
That's, that's what I've been saying. Okay. Yeah, and, now, and now, that's now wait, 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 stop. Who's Think that? Cloud. Stop. Whoever Shut that your is, mouth. stop talking. Now, now, Sorry. now, that's okay. Now, Nick, what proposition do you think on my agnosticism is entailed to be not true and not false? Yeah, I don't know that God exists. Uh, why would I say that's not true and not false? I think that that's true. You don't know that God exists? That's a true statement? Yeah, I mean, I don't You're know. Saying, you don't know that God exists. Yeah, uh, no, I'm not you do know that. God exists. Cause that's an implicit, yeah, that's an implicit denial of the Christian worldview. Wait a second, but you just said that I'm taking a position, agnosticism, that entails that the proposition, I don't know if God exists, doesn't have a truth value of true or false, right? I just told you that I view, I, I take that proposition to be true. It has a true truth value on my view. I'm yeah, not saying the, it's not true. Or false. I'm saying it's true. true. You don't know God exists. Your refusal. You cut out. Yeah, yeah, saying, sir. You cut out. Just, just start saying, again. You cut out. Just, yeah. Please. Listen, I don't. I don't like this. I don't like this clear. Um, I don't like this clear deception you're making here. I believe that propositions can be true. I don't believe that the proposition that you can be. I believe you can make a true statement that. Um, I am agnostic, but do I believe that agnosticism onto it, onto its, onto its um, own as a view is true? No, I think it's, I think it's logically incoherent to say you don't know no, about no. something that would be ontologically. Do you know what we're talking about here when we're dealing with an ultimate authority? So, sorry, Nick. God, I'm, I'm sorry. You're the one who made the claim. I'm trying to understand what the claim is and what the argument is for it. You have said that it's impossible to be agnostic, okay? We I, I made it clear. We asked what you mean by that, and you said that it means that there's a violation of the law of the excluded middle. We asked, what proposition is it that that violation is No, you're, I think what it is is I you're incorrigibly. You don't want to make, you're unwilling to make any concessions. I asked, what proposition is this it? This is the problem you I asked, to. what proposition is it that that violation of the law of the excluded middle is with respect to? And you said it's the proposition that I don't believe that uh, God exists. Or I don't know. Sorry, you can make true sorry, propositions. Right, right. Yeah, you, that I, that I yeah, you can make true propositions. Now, now, All right, the, I'm gonna turn you down. This is what I'm gonna do. I don't know if God exists or not. I'm not saying that that's not true and not false. I'm saying that I think that's true. I yeah, I know that you think that, but there's logical implications okay. of making show that. Show me them. Show uh, me, of show me. So of, just to be clear, yeah. you want to claim that somehow it's entailed by being agnostic that the proposition that uh, God, the, or sorry, that I don't know if God exists is both true and false. That's entailed by agnosticism, apparently, right? Or, no, sorry, I'm saying you can't false, take a middle position. Yeah, you're I'm saying, saying you not... cannot take, I'm saying you cannot right, take a right. middle you're position. Saying, you're saying that if you're agnostic, then with respect to the proposition, I don't know if God exists, you're saying that it's not true and it's not false, right? Yeah, I'm saying, okay, so yeah, what the that's fuck correct. Is the I'm saying agnosticism, right. I'm saying agnosticism declares a middle ground, which is a looser. All agnostics, okay. So I, I I don't know if there's really anywhere I can. Yeah, go. listen, I think you know what I'm talking about. It's just you, yeah, you're, you're adamant, you're militant, you're, okay? I, I you're militant with your atheism. I think okay, you're militant with your atheism. How about how and about every I time you converse with the theist? I repeat to you what you said, and you tell me if it's accurate, so we see if I'm understanding you. Do you want to do that? No, no, either no. Listen, either you way, you don't want you're going to get into the meta. Position, you're going to so get into the semantics and the philosophy speak. And try you to don't evade. don't want me to repeat your position so you can tell me if I've got it right or not? Who would ever say that? What don't, don't you understand? That? Why Why do you think you could be neutral with an ultimate commitment? Do you, look, Nick, you You're an said, ultimate you sovereign said, authority. Sorry, sorry. You're acting, you're acting like there's some... Oh, look, I just want to be clear, okay? I want to understand if I've got your position right, okay? Can I repeat your position to you and you tell me if I've got it right? Go ahead. Okay, so we're going to go step by step, okay? So first of all, you claim that it's impossible to be agnostic, correct? Yes. Okay, by impossible, you mean that there's a violation of the law of the excluded middle, correct? Correct. The violation of the law of the excluded middle occurs with respect to the proposition, I don't know if God exists, correct? That's, that's correct. 
Right. Okay. So all I'm asking for is just the argument that shows that that's the case. I want you to show how it is that if I'm agnostic, if I'm not sure uh, if God exists or not, that somehow that entails that it's both that it's not the case that I'm sure, or sorry, that that proposition is not true or false, right? That's what I want the argument for. I'm saying agnosticism, they're saying I don't know. So their refusal to make a affirmative, I'm saying in their refusal to, mm -hmm. uh, to state a positive affirmative that mm -hmm. yes, God does not exist or no, um, uh, or uh, or no, God does exist. Okay, so the refusal mm -hmm. to state any positive assertive uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, affirmative is irrational. Wait, but what you had claimed was it's that, just the dispositional issue. Sorry, but what you had claimed is that if someone is agnostic, then the proposition I don't know if God uh, exists or not. There's a violation of the LEM with respect to that. I don't understand why that's entailed. Right? I'm asking for an argument that shows that. Yes, because there there's two affirmatives that you're... There's only two affirmative positions. Yes, God exists, or no, God does not exist. So you're this, this ostensible position that you could be in a, in a state of ambivalence is, is vacuous. You can't be ambivalent. Your ambivalence Wait, you're, will you're, logically you're entail an affirmative. Can, can I point out due to your Due to your lack I, I of an overtly and explicitly stating God does or does not exist, your lack of stating the affirmative God does exist necessitates a implicit denial of God's existence. Okay, okay? Now, that's I the argument. I think, Take it or leave it, I, or just misrepresent well, as you're well, as you're well, doing. No, I, I want I want to explore it, right? So now you understand that there is a distinction between whether the proposition is true or false and whether I believe it's true or false, right? You understand, for example, that the proposition I'm sitting in a chair right now, it's either true or false, but my attitude towards it doesn't have to be it's true or false. My attitude towards it could be I'm not sure if it's true or false. You understand there's a distinction between my attitude and the proposition. I have not said that the proposition doesn't have a truth value, right? The proposition is true or false. I agree. Right. But we're talking about, well, I mean, that's ultimately what it is, right? It's, the, it's an attitude. It's a disposition. I agree I don't know, false, but you're, I, I don't, don't know. know but is. once again, that's a, listen, that's a fallacy. No, it's just a fallacy of the false analogy because that chair is not an ultimate necessity that governs the physical world and instantiates the, the uh, nominological necessities like the laws of nature that govern the physical world. That chair is a concrete object. That's a contingency that derives its context from a transcendent ultimate. Now, when dealing with God, it is impossible not... to be in a neutral position. What don't you understand? Okay, what it's I don't clear, understand it's not clear. Is ask yourself was making any kind of inductive reasoning so there couldn't be a weak analogy fallacy going on well just just one, one second there so just just to be uh le okay so what we really need to do is we need an actual argument with premises and a conclusion okay because yeah listen doing, regardless i i sorry, i did sorry, give you sorry, a clear sorry, argument sorry, you're just not sorry, accepting sorry, it sorry sorry what you had said right was that if you're an agnostic then it's entailed that the, uh, this proposition that uh, I don't know if God exists isn't true or false, right? So I'm asking you to give an argument that shows that. Now, every time I ask for an argument, you kind of go on a big tangent, right? Which is fine. Maybe, maybe that actually makes sense and I just don't understand it, okay? But what would help me is to actually see an argument with premises and a conclusion. Do you think we could do that? Yeah, do you think you could actually genuinely understand what I'm saying? Yes, and it would. I bet I can. If Well, I don't know if I can. It might not make sense, so maybe I can't. But if there's any way I'm going to understand it, it's going to be if we actually write it out like an argument. Could we do that? No, listen. Yeah, I said like an that argument. agnosticism, right. a proposed state of neutrality with... That and once again, I asked you this before, but you I, never I actually gave me an honest you're response. Repeat, you're repeating yeah, the claim. listen, you agree yeah, that you're I just, understand your claim. 
I asked you step by step about your claim, right? You're saying it's impossible. What you mean by impossible is that a violation of the LEM is occurring. What you, what proposition that's happening with respect to is I don't believe that God exists. I understand what your claim is, right? I'm saying I'm not convinced of it. So what I want is an argument with premises and a conclusion. Isn't that fair to ask for an argument? Yeah, listen, listen to me. Agnosticism, you could make a truth you can make a uh, true statement. I am an agnostic. That would be a true statement. Okay. But agnosticism, as onto itself a, um, in onto itself a position. The position of agnosticism is false. The okay. position of agnosticism is false in virtue of you cannot be in a state of uh, vacillation or ambivalence when dealing with something that is an ultimate authority that governs your way of thinking. Okay, I know that that's the claim. Do you understand what, what it means when something's argument. ultimate and not what? ultimate? Do you, under do you understand with something that would be ultimate argument. and not ultimate? Sorry, but this, I just, I have to buckle down at this point. So, what is yeah, P1? Yeah, because you're actually not answering my question. What is P1? I've politely answered all of your questions. I've P1? given you responses. I will be asking you what P1 is until I've you laid out. I've laid P1. out. I've laid out my argument. Okay, I've laid, laid out, out my line of reasoning. It I'm writing it down. Okay. What's P1? I've laid out my. I've laid out my. And I'm, I'm not answering the fool right according to his folly. Okay. Because you're trying to beguile what me with Veloso speak what and your usual P1? obfuscation. Okay. If, so you have a problem with logic? I thought you're the one invoking logic. Now, what is P1? Uh, no, I don't have a problem with logic. Okay, I think great. I, in so your I want system, a logical argument. I, I want think, a sound I think argument. your system I want to know what and, mo and model what of reality P1? certainly has a problem with logic. What is P1? How does law? How does laws of what logic exist in your P1? worldview? How if, does laws of logic if there exist is an in your argument, worldview? Nick, I would like to know what the premises are. What is premise Interesting. One? It seems as though you have no issue is with employing one? laws of logic with your what lines of reasoning. One, but I think the true the what true question to be one? posed here Hello? is whether your worldview can make these laws of logic intelligible. Can, can your laws of lo can your worldview make laws of logic premise. intelligible? Really want a premise over here. What is can you one? can your worldview make laws of what logic is intelligible? One. Premise one is, can your worldview make the laws of logic intelligible? It's really interesting, because it seems as though you have no issue using induction and deduction, supposedly, right? Well, can your worldview ground deduction and induction? Can your worldview ground the inductive principle? Yeah, the unbeliever will use rhetorical tactics and persuasiveness, though all truth is in okay. God. Colossians 2, Nick sir, you're a fool. Nick, let me help you out. A premise can't be a question. Your okay. logic what comes from the traditions one? of secular thought and of men. What is premise okay. one, Nick? I just want premise one. Premise one is, can your worldview ground the laws of no, logic? that's a question. A premise is a statement, my friend. It no, if you want to prevaricate... Fucking grandstanding, Nick, proposal. and just answer the fucking question he's asking you. Jesus, fuck. Yeah, all I want is the premise, right? And so a premise, it has to be composed, Nick, of propositions and propositional variables. A question isn't a proposition. It's right? called the Socratic que method. Questions you know don't what the have Socratic truth value. Are okay? you familiar with the Socratic method? Look, Nick, are you going to give a premise or not? Okay, yeah, I listen, I'm not going to... Yeah, what the claim is. Yeah, I'm not going to concede. I'm not going to concede to your methodology, to okay? I'll use my methodology. Impossible. You mean because the God, the because LDM the holy and sovereign and righteous the God of the Bible is the authorship and has authored my mind now, and my way of I thinking. Want, and has supplied me to know is with the necessary the and useful that shows methods if of defending the faith. There is such a violation of the LEM. So what is P1 for that, Nick? Yeah, premise one is how does your worldview ground the laws of logic? A premise cannot be a question, Nick. Questions don't have truth value, cannot be represented by propositional variables, okay? What is premise one? You're a philoso speaking. Okay, so premise Do one... Do you understand that? You are philoso speaking. Okay, and what is premise two? Yeah, you're, you're BSing. Okay, premise two is you're BSing. Okay, are there any more premises or hey, are we right at the conclusion? left okay right 